when I was small and the herring came, everything stopped. You know, you still went to work, but I remember my father coming home and going to bed. I'm like, oh, why is daddy going to bed so early? Because he was going to have to get up later in the night. And you'd go down and they'd bring up the net and the net was so full of fish. And they had lights there and they'd be gleaming and they'd be flopping out all over the place. And there'd be tubs, people would be having tubs of herring at their, at their home and cutting the row out. And the house would smell of baked herring. My mother just said, what I wouldn't give so for some herring row. Because food is, food is so important. These are things that, that we do. This is what we grew up. This is, it's comfort. It's comfort. It's a form of comfort. The tribe has historically leased this site for commercial taking of herring, and the tribe voluntarily stopped that when the numbers decreased. And so we've been left for years without true knowledge of how many we're taking out. When they were commercially harvested, we could uh, manage the amount of days that it was open, and we could count the number that came out by the barrel. And uh, since that time, we haven't had that information. So it's really been anecdotal how many are running through. So we reached out to Brad Chase and uh, Ed Clark, who are specialists in this field, and we asked uh, if they could help us with some of the technical aspects of setting up the camera and the herring run. And um, sure enough, they called one afternoon and said, I think I have uh, a, a herring system for you and we're gonna bring it down and help you put it in. So we set up these stations throughout the state at other locations, and what we do is we put the information together to give us a picture of how runs are doing statewide. And so we manage a half dozen of these type of stations ourselves, but we can't manage them all. So this is a great chance to have a station out in the vineyard where we can't get to very often and get information so the tribe will share the information with us. He's the brains of the operation. And what we're doing right now is assembling wings that will crowd the fish. They'll come up the river, moving with the flow on their spawning run, and they're going to encounter this wing, and they're going to be induced to go through the center of it where the flow is highest. And that'll bring them by the, the video camera. And so we'll capture their image 24 hours a day around the clock. And uh, when it's time for the fish to come down, There'll be an upstream wing system as well to guide them right through the middle. I think the installation went fantastic. I mean, this structure really fits well with the channel here. It looks like it belongs here. You know, it's, um, it's the right size. The flow goes right through the middle as it should to attract fish to go past the video camera. You know, it really looks great. I can't wait to hear the news of this fish going through it. On March 23rd, we set up the fish weir and immediately started seeing herring running through on our camera and our software. The software is a motion detection software that uses an algorithm to detect certain uh, size items that pass through that break a threshold, meaning that it will only capture images of fish passing or anything roughly that size. Each one of these peaks represents motion that's passed by the camera. We've set it at a certain threshold, which is roughly the size of a herring going through. So every time that it reaches one of these peaks, we can go straight to that particular event and determine if it was a species that we're looking for or whether or not it's debris passing through. With this grant funding and this equipment, we're able to continue this project in future years to continue the great success that we've had. It was very popular with uh, the local public. With some of our earlier uh, videos that we were able to capture and post, some of which got over 40,000 views. All sorts of manner of uh, creatures would pass by. You know, we had herring, all sorts of eels, horseshoe crabs, otters that used to play uh, early hours in the morning and we'd always end up getting text messages and emails from people really excited saying, hey, can you review that? What was that? That was really exciting. When we start the project up again next year, we plan on informing the public through Facebook and local email. Our goal is to keep an accurate count of how many herring are running through tribal lands and up into Squibnocket Pond to spawn each year and um, hopefully get some information about whether those populations are on the increase or on the decrease and that's going to help us manage this property which is what we do as the Natural Resources Department is we manage the fish and wildlife which is available to the Wampanoag tribal members. So this is an important part of our department, it's an important part of the tribe. Uh, we'll be able to continue this project into the future and uh, we're excited to see what comes.